Hello everyone, Stealth the Unknown here, and I have an apology to make. I recently discovered a part of the program I never knew about, and it's that I can adjust the zoom speed, so no, mo no more of this Wayne's World or whatever extreme close-up. And I also never knew I could pan like this, so for all of you who have been complaining about the zooms and the erratic panning, I am legitimately sorry. I never intended to nauseate or cause headaches to anyone. It was simply an error on my part and an ignorance on my part regarding the program that I've been using for years. So, honest apologies there, and I will try to make this video a little bit more pleasing to watch. Anyways, today's video is going to cover what you see here, the SIG 552, and its respective burst kit. I, from what I can see, all the trigger components between the different platforms of the SIG rifles are pretty much unanimous. So what you see here is what it's going to be on the other platforms as well, if you have preference to a specific platform. This one just appeals to me because, you know, I like the appearance of an SBR. It seems like a sleek, nice little carbine to shoot with. So you've seen semi-auto, let's go on to three-round burst. Boom. I like it. And auto, let's dump the rest of the mag. Alright. So, after that little intro, I'm going to go ahead and dive down into the nitty and gritty. And I will try to do my best at explaining this Swiss watch of a rifle. No pun intended, this thing is pretty complex, but I'll do my best at explaining it in detail. Let me know if I've gotten anything wrong for those of you who are more informed than I. Or if you notice something that off the top of your head doesn't seem right. I've done my best to try to dis dissect the uh, armorer's manual and figure out what everything is. But I could be wrong as I was wrong with the HK burst kit. Alright, into the nitty and gritty we go. Alright, so let's, as per the kind of standard, we're going to start with semi-automatic and I'll explain how that works. I want you to notice the two parts highlighted in blue. The first here is the sear and I want you to notice that it has an eccentric axle, or rather the part that rests on the hinge that the trigger is on is eccentric, so it has this play. And this is actually important to note because there's actually a specific reason for that. It's how the sear disconnects from the trigger. If you give me a moment, I will try to find the component that's supposed to press against this. You notice that there's actually a little bit of a... there we go. I'll bring that to the front. This piece is supposed to be here. There's a little extension on the trigger itself that I just highlighted that actually pushes on the sear and rotates it backwards, which slips past the index or the... Uh, I guess you could say the interface between the sear and the hammer and you'll see when it slips the hammer drops and it fires but immediately the sear slipped down kind of in the same fashion that the HK sear slipped notice boom the moment it slips it slips downwards under spring pressure because there's nothing pushing up on it anymore the hammer is responsible for pushing it up and resetting it to its battery position by battery I mean it's ready to fire. And you'll notice it's actually a fairly fairly simple mechanism and it just ran away there. I'll have to optimize this thing. And moving on to full auto. This piece right here is a retainer and you notice that it has a little extension here and you'll see what that is used for. I'll bring the auto sear and the interrupter out. Let's bring this surface out and highlight it. So this is a little ball or a little 
roller that engages the trip or the interrupter and there's a little extension on the bolt carrier itself that runs along this if I actually cycle the action to the rear I increase the strength of my tool you notice that the hammer gets pushed down by the bolt but that this interrupter also allows the sear here to move forward and you'll see that it actually is engaging I'll deselect it you'll see that it engages and when the interrupter or the trip is pushed down by the bolt carrier on that chutta on this uh, cutout channel it'll actually drop the hammer into the primary sear which is your semi-automatic sear and it will actually yield it to go up in a battery position again and it's reset and so I'll play that again and boom I'll actually take the selector rotate it to full auto and you'll see how it operates you can see as the roller is pushed on by the interrupter it forces the sear back I'll highlight this and the hammer so you can see how that operates and what's keeping the semi-automatic sear from slipping downwards is that retainer right here because when I switch to auto I'll go ahead and stop firing momentarily when I switch to auto there was a there's a cutout here on the selector on the axle itself that allows it to rotate and you'll see when I rotate it back it rotated up and out of the way there's actually a retainer a bent retainer in his in this that it holds on to if I can select it I actually need to render individual components like that retainer for them to be functional in this program this is a very simple physics program so this is obviously in semi-auto again and the retainer is just out of reach of this component but when I rotate the automatic position that retainer is keeping the sear in place so as long as the trigger is held that sear is going to rotate back out of engagement with the hammer moving on I'm going to go ahead and restart the sim and we'll move to three on burst and for this I'm gonna try to explain it the best I can the components are actually not that complex but I'll do what I can because their shape is a little awkward so you have if you paid attention you notice there is this component this little eccentric bushing on the hammer itself from what I understand this is fixed to the hammer it's actually just machined into it I could be wrong but from what I understand that's how it operates and I will try to allow the hammer to rotate and you notice that it plays and you notice there's a cam indexing as the hammers rotating and the th in the three round burst position what's important to note is this piece again this retainer is being acted on by the cam down here I'm gonna go ahead and shade these different colors so it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye and boom so what's important to note is that this as well is on an eccentric bushing this cam it looks a little bit like a bow tie in the armorer's manual as you can see why and what happens is when you're pressing the trigger it's actually pushing back on it and allowing to it to index the pawl a little bit easier so the hammer as you can see when it drops it operates that pawl which rotates along an axle on the exterior of the trigger housing or it's on the side it's pushed to the side and the depth here is all messed up so that you can see what happened and why the disconnection happens in the first place as you can see when it's indexed down that limiter this retainer is pushed out of the way which allows on the third shot for the sear, the primary sear, to actually disconnect as if it were in semi-auto. So that retainer buckle that you saw, or the extension that held 
the primary seer in place, that no longer comes into play anymore on the third shot. So I'll run through the sim again. Remember, hammer drops and fires, the eccentric bushing, or the cam on the base of the hammer pushes up on the paw, forcing the paw to index the bow tie cam. The cam is also being pressed on by an extension of the trigger that looks something like this, and that's what pushes it back to engage with that paw. The paw is spring-loaded so that it slips and glides across these teeth on this on this side and as it rotates it's coming up to meet this retainer and push it out of the way one two oh, it slipped two and three and I'll go ahead and remove the magazine just for now so you can see how it disconnected. Again, that sear as if it were in semi-auto slipped down past the part of the trigger that holds it in place or pushes on it. Just like semi-auto, basically you just have to operate or you have to visualize through on burst as a delayed semi-auto. So what it's doing is it's delaying that disconnection of the trigger to the sear until after a certain number of rounds through an index have occurred. It's actually a fairly straightforward mechanism. I would not have designed this like this in practice, but to each their own. I like to design things with simple tolerances, simple shapes, and I'll probably work on some iteration of some mechanism at some point that I can demonstrate for its simplicity. I actually I actually also like the idea of having a variable burst lengths, so I'll work into detail on a burst mechanism that has two burst settings, so you can set it to two round or three round. And the reason I would design that that way, well, there's several reasons, but the first is magazines. I like the idea of having a burst count that coincides with the number of rounds you have in your magazine. If you have a 20 round magazine like the standard for the SIG 552, you're going to have a 2 round burst at the end of your trigger function. Or like at the end of your magazine. So the last set of shots will be 2 rounds and then the bolt will lock to the rear. And I'll go ahead and reset the sim. And I'll point out some inconsistencies with the trigger or some properties of the trigger that are, I feel are worth noting. If I can find the damn burst kit. Oh, that's in there. I apologize for this. There we go. I'm going to try to highlight things again, make them different everything. So a lot of people due to video games, and I don't blame anyone for this, have the false miscon or the misconception that if you tap the trigger it's gonna fire all three. You actually have to hold, w and this is pretty much universal, I have not seen anything that does this this way, but universally from what I can see you have to hold the trigger for all three rounds. So Oh, it's in it's not in. No, it was in burst. I don't know why it wasn't indexing properly. Let me try that again. One. There we go. Two. And three. And the reason for this is because if you design any kind of sear inside a rifle that operates independently of the trigger, you run the risk if something jams up that it's a runaway machine gun. And that, in and of itself, is a danger. You're basically holding on to something that is dumping his magazine, whether you like it or not. So I'll demonstrate what happens if you let go of the trigger soon. So I'll fire one. Boom. You notice it actually resets. Unlike the M16's burst kit, this one resets every time you release. Which makes it a little bit more consistent in its trigger pull 
because the M16 you will actually get a cam that has a memory as some people would like to call it. Oh, come on. I will have to optimize this. This isn't perf perfect. Hopefully that cleared things up regarding this burst kit. I will look into the AN94 and even the G3. I look forward to that one. But yeah, if you have any questions, leave a question in the comment section below. Oh, really quick. The only reason that the automatic does not function in 3-round burst because of this pawl is because, as you noticed, when the when the selector is put in this position, it rotates the cam or the pawl down below engagement with the uh, cam. So that prevents it from indexing in the first place. It still has a little bit of play from what I can see, and I wasn't entirely sure about this. This is the only thing that made sense given the shapes, but I could be wrong. If you know better than myself, go ahead and comment and correct me, but to me this is what makes sense. Whereas if I had it in burst, obviously it indexes one, two, and three. Alright, so thank you for watching that. If you have any questions... Oh. Okay, sure. If you have any questions or complaints about how crappy this rifle operates right now, or whatever you choose to comment about, whether it's a question, a concern, further information to better this, let me know. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and share. Uh, get the word out about this. These are very handy for anyone who's interested and should point people down the right path when they're thinking about how firearms operate. I have i can't express just how grateful I am that you guys have been doing that already. And I want you guys to share this with anyone who is interested in even the slightest. I know it takes a lot of work to try to explain things with diagrams, so I like to render things in this program because it makes them easier to vi visualize and that's the entire goal of this channel. I will be expanding into other realms in the future when I get the time to do that. Right now I hold a full-time job and I'm planning on going to college and figuring my life out. Yay for that. What is the deal with this? Eh, thanks for watching. Bye.